welcome back to another get it all done style video. I have so much to get done today. It's a very busy week ahead. It's also 4th of July weekend, the very tippy tippy beginning of it. It's Friday morning. I went to the grocery store. I'm going to share with you a grocery haul, some food prep for the week ahead and some meals that I'm going to be making. We have a lot to get done today. Instead of a full on grocery haul, I am just going to share with you a quick snippet of the groceries that I picked up because we are using all of them for today's video. And I went to Home Goods yesterday, picked up a few things. If there's anything I can find online that might help you guys out for kitchen, refrigerator, food prep organization, I will link it down in the description box below. But let's get started. We have a lot of work to do in today's video. Hey, 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 welcome back to another video. So before I get started with the food prep, I have to empty this load of dishes into the dishwasher. Let me know down below. I ask this all the time, but I love doing dishes. What's your favorite house chore? Honestly, I know a lot of people just like don't like to clean, but it's part of life and you might as well enjoy it. And to me, there's nothing more satisfying than making a huge mess and cleaning it all up. So I went to Home Goods, got some of these uh, bread pans. I have no idea what happened to my bread pans when we moved. I thought I moved with them. I can even swear that I used them in a video. So I don't know. I even looked back in a couple of older videos from when we moved and couldn't find it. So I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. But in case you're wondering how I get the stickers off of my jars when I recycle my jars or for example, this thing from Home Goods, why are they putting the sticker on the plastic? Come on now. A little bit of Dawn dish soap, a little bit of elbow grease. This little steel scrubber usually works great. The sticker's off, all the stickiness is off and we're good to go. These strawberries barely made it till Monday. They were so good. So as you saw, I washed them in really cold water and then just a little bit of white distilled vinegar. It's how I wash all my fruits and veggies. It's super simple. I don't always show it in every single video. If I'm doing like a quick, you know, budget meal prep, I don't sh always share me washing everything. But then I get questions of like, oh, did you wash that? Yes, because I don't know who touched it at the store. Yeah, we're good. Um, a lot of times too, people will say that they use a different mixture for washing their veggies. You can use whatever works for you. This just works for me. I like it. It makes my veggies really and fruits really vibrant. I've also done the salt wash with strawberries before. That works really well and they're very, very sweet. And I'm obsessed with these containers. I love that they have the little drainage in them for produce because it kept everything nice and fresh and delicious and super easy to clean. It's something I think I've bought maybe twice in my adult life is grapes. I don't know. I just feel like I love grapes, but we never buy them. So instead of leaving them in the bag and then not eating them, I was like, you know what? No, we just need to wash them, get them in a container. And that was the whole goal with getting to home goods and getting some extra containers because I only have maybe like two dozen, which it seems like a lot, but it's not because I'm always sending food with my husband to work or you know, making cookies or baked goods and sending them with other people so I don't get my containers back. But I have maybe like two dozen plastic Tupperware containers. And I did grab some more of those at Whole or at Whole Foods, not at Whole Foods, at Home Goods. And so that is one of the reasons why sometimes I don't do a lot of produce prep is because I feel like when I look in my Tupperware drawer and I'm like, oh, I don't have that much Tupperware left because I've given it away this week or I'm waiting for it back or yada, 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 you know. So I decided to get some containers that were just for the refrigerator and that way everything stores really nicely really fresh these containers are made for that purpose and I was really happy with these overall I think they're wonderful I don't have enough produce to fill them fully but that's okay I kind of like that I have some breathing room that's how my whole life is I also don't know if I've ever purchased a full pineapple yeah, I think I have. And I was going to say during the duration that I've been on my channel, I'm not actually sure. But I do know a lot of you guys have told me this. If you take that top, soak it in water. I think it takes two to three weeks and then the um, the ends start to grow back. You can plant it. I have not planted one yet. Honestly, 
because I'm really loving, well, if I lived anywhere else but the desert, but I just really love desert. I don't even know if I like plants enough to grow them outside my house other than the ones that we have that honestly I would pull out in a heartbeat because I don't like any how any of them look, but they came with the house. We didn't get to pick those, but this pineapple was amazing. It was superior. I ate so much of it. I left it back in the container and ate so much of it while I was meal prepping. It was the perfect pineapple. And if you guys pick the perfect pineapple, I always smell the bottom of them. Is that weird? I don't know if you're supposed to do that while in the grocery store. You know, the pineapple thing. Leave me a winky face down below if you know what I'm talking about <laughs> with the pineapple. Moving right along to veggies, these are my favorite cucumbers. I always joke with you guys, they're called English cucumbers here, but then you uh, that live in England are like, we just call them cucumbers. I know, we have different names for things over here. I don't know. But then I also decided to do something different with my carrots because I didn't eat carrots for one of the recipes I'm going to share with you. So I decided to wash them. I only like slightly scrub them if there was a little bit of dirt on them because I am using the peels otherwise I wouldn't even worry about it but you're going to see me make my homemade veggie broth here in a little bit but I decided I knew I wasn't going to use all these carrots for the recipe I had planned and it was like a dual purchase I can use some for the recipe and then I can use some to snack on let me know down in the comments below do you guys snack on carrots with mustard because of TikTok. I've been doing that since college. So when all my friends were like, oh my God, you have to try this because of TikTok. I was like, where were you in 2006? And I was sitting like at the cafe as a freshman snacking on carrots and mustard packets. Like, where were you? It's so delicious. And recently I've been really getting back into it. I also like a little bit of salt on my carrots when I have that, it's so delicious. As long as you take your carrots, chop them down and store them in some water, they are perfect. Chippy chop, chippy chippy chop chop. So the rest of these carrots I'm going to chop just in little bite-sized pieces. I'm not super picky. Everything that's going into this next pot that you'll see is not like the same size because I don't care. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go ahead and take all the peels of the onions, the carrots, you'll see some zucchini, potatoes. I'm throwing that all in a pot with some water. I'm gonna boil that for, well, until it comes to a boil, so probably to pick, take about 10, 12 minutes. And then I'm gonna let it sit on low for about two to three hours and I'm gonna make some beautiful veggie broth and I'm gonna put that in my fridge freezer for meal prep later in the next coming weeks, months. I love having that on hand, especially my freezer because I can use it whenever I want to. I am obsessed with the song by Alba, Angel Eyes. I'm trying to say that quietly because G-O-O-G-L-E is sitting next to me and I've been listening to that song all day while I was meal prepping. So this first meal going into the pot, carrots, onions, water, um, we're doing a sweet potato zucchini. I'm gonna make a really awesome curry. You can use any curry sauce that you want. I'm using the saffron rose 
saffron road Thai mango because it's just a little bit spicy and super sweet and I feel like it's perfect for summertime. So I'm making this big pot had a time to put over potatoes and rice throughout the week. And I love curry hot or cold, but because it's so hot out recently, I was like, you know what sounds really good? Cold curry. <laughs> it sounds so good because of the coconut milk. I feel like you can have it both ways, but I bought a bunch of veggies. I made this huge pot of curry and it was perfect because we could have it for dinner a couple nights. We could have it for lunches. Like I said, you can put it over potatoes. I did a couple russet potatoes. I'm not above putting them in the microwave. I put a microwave in my kitchen for a very specific reason. You guys crack me up when you're like, hey, you should try not to use your microwave. It's like really bad for you. And I'm like, well, I did choose to put one in my kitchen. We went back and forth, back and forth, if you're curious, between putting like a hood vent in and like obviously doing a completely different kitchen design, which the kitchen design we kept going back and forth with my now one of my bestest friends, who's now my neighbor. Um, well, she, anyways, we'll, we'll get into that later. But she has the kitchen design that I really had was on the fence with. But I'm glad we did the microwave. We use it so much. If you guys don't use the microwave, that's okay. That's okay. Everyone lives differently and we choose what works best for us. And for me, it's super convenient and easy. So when I do like a big bulk meal prep day like this day and get all my food ready for the week, I can warm things up really conveniently. I can make a couple of potatoes in that microwave and then I'm good to go. It's, it's awesome. So this pot is absolutely beautiful. I will link the video down below if you guys want to check out. There might be still a discount on it, but I have a couple more one pot meal recipes that I can link down below that I use this pot for. It's beautiful. You definitely need it in your house and it comes in a lot of different colors. Okay, so moving on, we are doing the veggie broth. So as you can see, I take all my scraps, put them in water in a big pot. Like I said, bring it to a boil, then bring it down to low, let it simmer for like two to three hours. You can add salt or any kind of seasonings you want to at this time, or you can do it just when you are cooking with the veggie broth. You can use any scraps that you have. A lot of times I will save my scraps in my freezer, but I thought, you know what? I'm gonna make this today because I'm turning my stove top on, I'm doing everything. You might as well get it done, don't save it. So the next meal I'm making is kind of like a mushroom gravy or a cream of mushroom, but I'm putting a lot of extra veggies in it, some red peppers, uh, zucchini, onions, mushrooms. I'm also gonna use coconut milk again, a lot of garlic, and then I'm gonna make a little bit of a roux with a cornstarch and this is also going over rice and potatoes because I have so many rice, potatoes, sweet potatoes, russets, Japanese, different kinds of rice, couscous for my husband, not for me. Um, you could do, use pasta, gluten-free or just traditional pasta. But again, it's something that I can make in bulk and then have it ready for the week ahead. like making some kind of snack or dessert every single week when I'm doing these large meals like this especially when I'm doing like prep ahead thinking ahead and I love to send things with my husband to work so I decided to make a banana bread and I bought this blueberry pie filling because it was a lemon blueberry bread that recipe I found on Pinterest but it also called for cinnamon and I felt like cinnamon and lemon don't go together so I just did cinnamon 
didn't do the lemon. Went ahead and got some flax seed all ground up in my little grinder and I'm doing it with flax eggs. This is just regular flour, regular sugar, not gluten free because like I said, I'm gonna send this to work with my husband next week. He loves taking things with him to work to share with his coworkers, and I was like, this is perfect. Since I'm, go ahead and making this, but you absolutely could make this gluten-free, just swap for a one-for-one -one flour. And I will leave the type recipe down in the description box below. No, you don't have to use pie filling. It's just what the recipe called for, probably because there's no oil or no butter with it. So just keep that in mind. I did swap out the eggs for the flax egg and it worked perfectly fine. This was such a great recipe. My husband raved about it, so there was a ton of flavor with it. I think next time I will take the cinnamon out and put the lemon in because I think that would add a lot of flavor as well. And I think that aroma would be really nice. So let me know down in the comments below which meal of the three you're gonna make first. And this one you could actually make, I think, in your air fryer. Have you guys seen that recipe going around TikTok for the air fryer banana bread? You just have to make it in like a tiny little um, pan. You could definitely do that if you didn't wanna heat up your house. But like I said, I was cooking for this day and I thought I have everything going for an hour and then I don't have to touch the stove top or the oven the rest of the week. struggle <laughs> then just stay tuned for this little bit I don't know the parchment paper sheets uh not a fan but that's all the store had and I do like baking bread in parchment unless it's a crusty bread that you can put into a dutch oven but man this parchment paper was a situation and I'm like trying to figure it out and then, you know what's so funny if I use the ones that I can tear versus the ones that are like pre-cut I usually do a larger sheet, so I feel like it's not like folding in in the inside. If you guys have any tips about parchment paper in loaf pans, let me know down below because now I have the pre-cut sheets and I have to use them up. So I popped this in the oven, one hour, 350 degrees. It was perfect. I was gonna put it on my bottom rack. I don't ever put anything on my bottom rack, I feel like when I bake, but then was like, no, actually, it needs to go on the top rack. And like I said, one hour, 350, perfection. It was beautiful. Like I said, my husband loved it. His coworkers loved it. Something you can make ahead or keep in your recipe repertoire for fall, for fall baking, because that's coming up in like 90 days. Thank you as always for hanging out with me in my kitchen today. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I will see you Saturday. You're getting a bonus video this week, and I can't wait to share that with you. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.